The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach, do we go, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Class. There we go. Did it early today and they got confused. So what do we have going on out here today? Well, we're up a bit, but we're right through where the biggest resistance is. Uh, 24.25 on the S&P cash, we got up to 24.20, eh, let's call it 24.27. So we're just a point and a half off. Volume is not good. It's uh, 1.75 billion shares as we start the show. We really need something approaching 2.2 uh, to 2.4 billion shares uh, to have uh, escape velocity for higher prices. Now, you could... Maybe say maybe we get it on Monday, but uh, any close below 23, or excuse me, 24.23, is yet another win for bears. So we're not that high above the resistance level that we could not fade into the close and yet get another very good sell signal. Now again, maybe that sell signal happens on Monday. Uh, had a lot of people short on Monday, and this is kind of a little squeeze for those folks that shorted in light volume on Monday and didn't cover yet. Um, if I think if you've got a long-term view of being short this market, I think you sit on your hands. If you've got a shorter-term view, like my short-term or my daily newsletter, uh, I started firing away after lunch today, and I think we've got some good positions. Risk uh, basically is fairly limited. You start seeing prices uh, about uh, 24.33 and higher for a close on the S&P cash, and that kind of negates the bearish case for a little while. So, uh, if you're bearish, uh, this is a good time to jump back in if you've already covered, and if you're bullish, you want to see probably a close above 24.33 to get back on the A train. In the uh, meantime. Let's start off with a little bit of history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1930, construction of the Hoover Dam begins. Over the next five years, a total of 21,000 men would work ceaselessly to produce what would be the largest dam of all time, or I guess the largest dam of its time. Chinese now made a bigger one, I guess, about 10 years ago, as well as one of the largest man-made structures in the world. The dam would provide essential flood control, which would prevent damage from downstream farming communities that suffered each year when the snow from the Rocky Mountains melted and joined the Colorado River. Further, the dam would allow expansion of irrigated farming in the desert, would provide a dependable supply of water for Los Angeles and other California communities. Uh, today, it uh, powers about one million homes every year since it was built and uh, Probably one of the better things that the government does is build dams. Probably should build some more of them and generate electricity. One of the better ways to do this. And, of course, uh, I've been through it a few times. Unfortunately, now, since the 9-11 thing, uh, you can't drive over it anymore. And you can't uh, have tours inside it because uh, those pesky little terrorists, they want to blow the thing up. So... Uh, a little different than it used to be. I kind of like the old way but before the bridge was put in. And, uh, man, just glad that I went and did it when I had the chance, kind of like uh, going to the Statue of Liberty. You go when you got a chance to see those things. Don't think you're going to get a chance later. Things change. There's something that's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Do it the first time you're there. Don't wait until you have a, a – for maybe a later time to go do it. But uh, – I think I went three or four times. Uh, I got bored a lot. I was I spent about eight weeks in Las Vegas a year during trade shows, and I wasn't a big gambler. 
about an hour on the table is about all I could take. And then I would go off looking for other things like this. And they had a, I'm trying to remember if it's on 4th Street in Las Vegas. They had a thing where you could rent machine guns. I loved that. And then they tow old, old cars that they had towed um, that were derelict cars. Uh, and you could shoot them with machine guns. That was a lot of fun. They had another thing over there where you could learn to skydive in this giant fan that was about 20 feet around. It would blow fast enough that it keep you uh, keep you up at terminal velocity. So I learned to skydive, although I never jumped out of a plane. Never think I will, unless I have to. But, uh, on this day in 1930, um, Hoover Dam begins. And if I remember right, there's six or seven people that fell into the concrete while it was being manu uh, built. And uh, yeah, they're going to be there forever. Uh, it, no, I just couldn't stand for about an hour. That was about it. I could make about 50, 70 bucks an hour on a, uh, on a uh, uh, 21 table. And that was about it. I just couldn't stay, keep that focused. I didn't like that everybody was smoking around me. I'm an avid anti-smoker. Just really makes my eyes burn everything else. So uh, anyway, that was about an hour was all I could stand. Then I was looking for trouble elsewhere. And uh, Las Vegas is too easy a town to find trouble. So uh, yeah, what else can you say about it? Um, that's about it. Uh, we had good job numbers this morning. That kind of uh, helped out the futures. But as I said yesterday, as we were talking, a lot of these semis look like they were about ready to bounce. And I don't think that there's a lot more to be said on that um, other than you had a little test. I suspect that the semis have kind of a little bit of a floor underneath them uh, right now. Uh, but they are probably in the B to C leg of an ABC down. I don't see a great deal in any of these that would make me want to go long. Um, what do we have out here? Um, when we look at like Apple, this thing's just bouncing along the 142 levels. I suspect that there is enough to this uh, Qualcomm Apple lawsuit that could actually block new iPhones coming into the uh, country this uh, Christmas. Uh, and I think Apple's right now um, believes they're pressed a little bit too much. Uh, Qualcomm has had one of the best legal defenses when it comes to patent infringement. And my guess is that they could shut Apple down, um, maybe even on existing products, but certainly uh, there's a lot of new uh, Qualcomm patents on the newer, faster chips. And uh, it's probably gonna be fairly easy to say that they violated one of those. And the lawsuits have already flied, flown, lied, flown, and they will come out and probably be heard before Apple ships its iPhones. So there is the possibility that uh, Apple is going to be paying a lot more for the chips in the near future, go on its phone, uh, or even get blocked from importing the phones. And I think that's a high possibility. I think we're starting to see Apple get a little bit too big for its own britches. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 And we're looking at semis here. We're going to look at uh, silver in a minute from a request in the den. You can always email me at path at tfnn.com if you want uh, something uh, uh, to uh, for me to look at. You can also call me at 877-927-6648. I haven't heard anybody dulcet voice over the uh, phone line, so uh, this would be a good day to call me at 877-927-6648. Uh, looking at the semis, uh, I, all I see is kind of a weak bounce out here and an ABC down. My thought is that the $79 area is kind of where uh, this uh, downturn in the semis will continue. Uh, a lot of flogging of the semis this morning by the uh, um, one and only uh, guy on CNN that I truly hate. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Cramer. Yes. Mr. Cramer was out to flogging uh, everything from NVIDIA to anything else that he could this morning, telling everybody about how wonderful the world was. And uh, eh, that really doesn't have anything to do with it, whether the uh, stock is priced uh, correctly, if it's too high or too low. But uh, eh, simpleton is a simpleton does. So anyway, he was out flogging everything this morning and you know, you had some good news in the job market, so there's not a whole lot going on there. But if you look at these SMHs, you really have a, uh, a fairly nice signal. If you're not and continually short the semis, that uh, 85, uh, what is that, uh, 84.29, 84.28, right in there, you've got confluence. So that's where, if you're thinking uh, that it, you're bearish on this, you don't want that thing to really close above that level. You want it to spike maybe through there, pull the trigger and have it close back below 84.24. That would set up your uh, ABC on the way down and uh, get you probably into that $79, $78 level, which is where I think this thing could go all the way back down to 76.25, which I think is still open that April 13th low. 
think a lot of this is just uh, overhyped bloat. We're going to start seeing companies next week uh, with a few of them, I think, uh, having some earnings. If I'm not mistaken, it's NVIDIA, NVDA. I'll check that during the break. But I think that is one. Uh, uh, yeah, collusion. Collusion in the Justice Department. Okay, what do we have? NVIDIA, a little pop out here today. Again, I said the... Uh, the uh, uh, the one on CNBC that was flogging all tech this morning, telling everybody the world and the markets can only go higher. Uh, you've got kind of a nice little bounce out here. My guess is that before the end of the summer, we see 108, 107 on NVIDIA. And uh, there's a lot of people thinking, well, you know, not that just that big a deal, but there are times when just a perfect storm happens and stocks go to the moon. I don't think this one's going back down to 20, but I do think that probably all this uh, hysteria from about uh, the 10th of May could be just temporary hysteria. And there's a lot of competitors coming back in this company. I like the company. I just think it's overpriced for the competition that's coming. Uh, speaking of the competition that's coming, uh, Tesla has been trying to rally. They got up to 317 today. Uh, pretty much eh, up a couple bucks now. What is the, uh, what are we up now? I think I had it up here earlier. Where are we at? Yeah, I just don't have it up here. Um, Okay, where did it go? Must be in this list because it won't let me add it. Where's it at? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're up uh, three bucks on Tesla. Three eleven sixty four is the last tick I show. Got to three seventeen. It's rolled all that back. Um, you know, you don't have a lot of juice. I don't think there's going to a lot of people wanting to get into this. They, I went through in the Tech Insider and, and basically showed a lot of the issues, I think, that uh, face Tesla. Uh, if you're just looking at the charts, the energy off this June 23rd high was significant. And again, it's easy when uh, you're kind of the only game in town. But uh, from Tesla not passing uh, the uh, crash test as well as it has in the past, uh, Consumer reports uh, saying quality is starting to suffer uh, and just a handful of other things. I suspect that it starts to be valued as a car company, much like every other car company. And that means six to eight percent margins, not their uh, you know, probably wildly inflated 20 to 25 percent that they talk up. That's I just think cook books. So uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, take a look at this. I don't think anybody believed it was 380. Uh, or worth 380, just a lot of beanie babies. Uh, but uh, again, watch this very closely. Uh, once the most uh, bubblicious of stocks start to fail and you see energy to the downside, then you start to see other sectors follow it. I suspect that's what we're looking at and probably fairly close to uh, the S&P, maybe in the next day or two, uh, probably top off and start heading back down along with the small caps. Now, uh, uh, SIVR, question to look at silver, SIVR. I'm talking to a few people today about gold and silver. I was talking to Andy before his show yesterday, and I told him, I, you know, the, at a minimum, I kind of want to gap down before I would look at gold and silver. Unfortunately, this gap down probably a little bit too much and too much volume. Uh, you got, uh, what, uh, 278,000. You may get a little bit of a, a uh, of a, uh, just an exhaustion move in silver. But I just don't see a lot uh, in either silver or gold out here. In fact, the more interesting part in silver would probably be looking at gold, uh, which I think you have a setup here for the 1180 test. 
Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, the, uh, now, we had volume of 8 million shares, uh, 8.3 million shares already into the 7 million share of May 9th. So we've busted it. We've busted it with some volume or at least more volume. But my guess is Monday we could even see that 1180 come up. And that would probably be where I would be looking for the first opportunity. And I'm not anticipating it. I would wait to see what it does. But we see uh, like a, a big gap, another gap down to 1180 on gold. And you got no energy, then that may be a signal out here. But I have a feeling you may be set up for, you've got one gap down from the third you got another gap down today. I'd be looking for yet another gap down after the move today was with enough energy. We'll see how this volume comes in, but this thing's probably going to, what, go 11 million shares, something like that. So you're getting close to double the volume of the May 9th low. So maybe a little bit of an exhaustion, but I'd still hope for one more gap down to uh, start looking at silver and gold. We'll be back in a The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I've been looking at this uh, like 21.23 to 21.33 uh, area is kind of the area that we were trapped in. Uh, we're at 24.24 uh, now. So you don't have more than about a point or two to go below to uh, get back into the uh, below that range. So that would be bearish. As I said, you don't have very much. You know, you got about 
Well, right now you got about six, seven points higher and about two points lower uh, for me to get a signal, i.e. right now I'm bearish. And as long as the thing closes below 24.23, continue bearish. If the thing was to close over uh, 24.33, I'd have to say maybe you have, a, have to look again and you may get one more retest of the high. And again, those are closing numbers. We get a lot of uh, action at the end of the day. So uh, I don't think even now we can start writing anything. But, you know, a, cl a little close, a little sell off at the end of the day would be fairly bearish, even to remain on a day higher, mostly because of the light volume. We're still under 1.9 billion shares uh, at the end of the day. As I said, I just don't see anything in gold in the way it's acting. Uh, but again, everything is broken right now. Uh, I've said that to a couple of people today. Um, none of the standard correlations that probably should exist in the market are, uh, especially when you look at the TLT. Uh, this thing probably should have held above the 126 level. I gapped and blew right through it back on the uh, 29th, uh, and you've continued back down here. But once you were above about 123 and 126, probably should have held both of those. Uh, it hasn't held any, and you're actually going back uh, to the uh, big day of strength um, that's still underneath this, which is the 17th of May. But you had nice signs of strength. They all failed, and they all came back. Uh, so, you know, I have to say I'm kind of scratching my head a little. I'm certainly not extremely confident, nor am I going to shake my fist at the uh, trading gods and tell them what and which way I need to go. Um, any support in the XLE? Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, XLE, -E. I can type it right. There we go. Okay, well, you got a light volume move out here. I still suspect, and I was telling a couple people my theory today, uh, that energy uh, was like a yeet, what? almost two years ago now, uh, we were going into the end of August and all these energy stocks had all had very light volumes and they just continued down right through it with the very light volumes included in that last couple of weeks of August. And I don't, I, I get the sense, especially the volumes in the last couple of days when these things came down, you don't have the volume today, but I think maybe you could get it on Monday. I wouldn't, probably be placing a bet and anticipating Monday in the energy sector. I suspect I got the feeling and looking at a lot of charts, I continue to have the feeling that this looks a lot more like that August where you got down and I was ready to buy a lot of these uh, energy stocks in that August time period going in the last week or two of August. And they just continued to go lower. I never saw a sign to buy them, so I never did. But I remember that, and it went the well, we that was one of the bigger pullbacks we've had in the market, and it was all on no volume. So uh, you can get no volume pullbacks, and it's not uncommon in light volumes to get them either. Uh, you've got a kind of a decent looking candle. You got half the volume. I would still say I would wait till Monday and make sure that this is just not another head fake like we got in those last two weeks of August a couple of years ago. Uh, to, to, to NBR. To, to, to. Okay. Uh, to, to. Okay, again, light volume on neighbors industry. Um, you've had you know, some decent energy on the last two days. Again, this is Friday and light volume. Uh, you need 15 million shares. You're into it with nine today. So looks pretty good. Uh, again, you know, we're kind of fading a little here. Uh, you just need a couple points lower to kind of go back in to that lower trading range, which would take you back to uh, 2405. So I don't see a great risk reward here for going long into the weekend. I could say that, you know, short I think that risk reward is a little better. I could still see people waiting till Monday uh, to put a trade on either way, depending on whether they were bearish or bullish. 
Um, I just thought that the risk reward would be probably as good as it gets today on the short side, probably better if you think long on Monday. So and that would be my thought. Uh, looks good. You got lighter volume. The, you need a close above, what is that, uh, close above uh, $7.16. So you're still a few pennies underneath that. Uh, if you just thought you had to buy this thing, then you'd wait to the last minute in the day and see if it closed above 716. It needs to be back into the trading range. But again, I still suspect that we might have a, especially in a lot of these, we might have that August time frame of a couple of years ago where everything just went down on light volume uh, into the end of the summer. This may only be a couple of weeks, but I just don't see a lot. And, you know, if we can't, this is 230, almost 240 uh, Eastern time, and we still don't have 1.9 million shares or 1.9 billion shares on the uh, NYSE consolidated tape. So that still uh, makes me think that there is some issues. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some other things I wanted to get into. Uh, we'll go back to uh, yesterday's. Right or the days before, I think the day before I wanted to look at a few. Take a quick look at Autodesk with all the uh, tech stocks starting to go hard, higher. Uh, do, 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 okay. This is a lot of why I think we at least have one more leg down and a test one more down. And that is that uh, many of these stocks in fact, the propensity of stocks that have decent two gaps at the same price have come back and tested them. Uh, Autodesk up a little, but no volume today. 1.14 uh, million shares. This 88 buck level, or excuse me, 98 buck level that goes back to a gap down on the 17th of May and then a gap up on the 18th of May certainly makes me think that that $98 $97 range right there is where you're looking for on Autodesk. Um, the energy really went up and down on the same, so I'm not a big fan of probably shorting Autodesk, but I would say the risk reward has to get to be about 98 to play it on the long side. Uh, AEIS, Advanced Energy, not much on that one. Um, again, looking for a lot of these stocks to Still about half the gap. We got kind of close on form factor. F O R M. We'll look at this one when we come back. Give me a call. I feel lonely like the Maytag repairman. 877 927 6648. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. John Logan has been hard at work making the Taz Profile Scanner Plus the best it can be, and he'll be hosting a special hour-long webinar for all Taz Profile Scanner Plus subscribers this Wednesday, July 12th from 5 till 6 p.m. Eastern. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to this amazing piece of software. See for yourself how it tracks 5,000 financial instruments in real time, over 17 different stock exchanges, U.S. futures, and currencies. This piece of software will change the way you trade, and it can be used with any trading methodology. The combination of price and volume is what makes market profile-based analysis so unique. We've opened up a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus, even if you've had a trial before. So now is a great time to sign up. You also gain access to John's July 12th webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile Unique. Sign up for your free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right now on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Had a uh, question to look at it, uh, Adobe real quick. And, you know, I think you probably got your bounce out today. This thing doesn't get some juice on Monday and uh, move higher. I think that this, from looking at it, really kind of looks like wants to come back down to this 132 level it's got this one actually looks better it's got a high volume high out here but it just looks to me like a lot of these stocks are in bigger trading ranges and this one may be in a trading range from 147 back down to 132 and i just think some of these things are kind of a little bit ahead of themselves we were talking about uh, form uh, this one's kind of interesting just like maybe eleven dollars and fifty cents on this one uh, but uh, not a bad setup. There are some good-looking charts out here. That's what I talked about yesterday, that some of these just look like they were having light volume tests. But the bounce off those tests yesterday just don't give me a lot. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. Uh, I think it was IYT I wanted to look at, which is the uh, transportation. He had uh, 332,000 shares on the 3rd. Today, you've got 111,000 uh, shares uh, breaking to a new high. No signal out here that says sell yet, but you do have the opportunity to open up uh, that IYT to the downside on Monday. Uh, JetBlue wanted to take a quick look at that. Uh, we'll go to uh, Rich in Oregon. How are you doing today, Rich? Pretty good, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. I heard you talking about the XLE, yeah. and uh, you said you were anticipating that it was going to drift possibly down into August like 2015. Would you use this as an opportunity to go into like the ERY, which is the short of the XLE? Or uh, too dangerous here now that the XLE bumped into its 52-week low today? Yeah, I mean, you're kind of, kind of late to the trade. You spiked okay. it today. You did so on, you needed 1.6 million shares, you got 900,000. Um, you're probably going to end up with 1.2 million shares by the end of the day or 1.3. So it's not, it's, it's not a rousing endorsement either way. But my guess is I don't, I would rather probably wait till Monday morning and pull the trigger than do something today. Okay. There's, there's a few stocks and stuff that I looked at that I think I'm getting fairly decent signals on, uh, and the risk reward is fairly narrow. But and they're part of the XLE, like your yeah. Chevron's and Exxon's? No. No. Oh. No, I'm not, in, I'm not in that sector at all. Okay. I'm just saying that I think that there, there are some sectors that are interesting. This one, I just don't see getting into a weekend 
and playing this. I just don't think that there's one going to be that much difference. I think by 1030 in the morning, you're probably going to have a much better idea of which way this is going and probably a little less anticipation, a little bit more uh, waiting for the signal, I think, because we're kind of like I said, this isn't this isn't something where you're going to test this thing with half the volume, right? Okay. So you're going to you're going to be getting kind of close. So the signal's not going to be bright and vibrant. Just the way I'm looking at it, I continue to see uh, some of these sectors that make me think that all commodities tend to look weak right now, and we could see all of that. And I can't get anybody even to think that there's any deflation in the market. But it's certainly everything I'm looking at, kind of, you know, the bonds are down, gold's down, you know, crude's down. We're looking at all these things. Makes me think that there's a possibility of some deflationary pressures out there. And maybe that's why so many things don't make sense. There's not a lot of times the thing that the Fed and everybody is more scared of than anything else is deflation. Because there's no real way, once you get it started, uh, no real way to fight it until the house burns down. Then you build a new one. And oh. so I, I kind of see that's what's going on. I think that's why the U.S. government has savaged the dollar so hard. I mean, they've gone after that thing tooth and nail every single day for a couple months. And I think if they stood back, the dollar would pop to 100 on the dollar index in a matter of days. But, you know, they're not doing that. They're going to make sure that we have a weaker dollar, I think, for some time to come. But with a weaker dollar, we probably should see crude doing well. We should see gold doing well. And we're not. So what is the answer to that question? It's something that no one wants to talk about. The, the, the person that you cannot ever speak their name, and that is Mr. Deflation. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's what it is. But there's too many things that are broken out here in the market for me to be going out and and making trades that aren't up against my back's not up against the wall. This one's kind of indifferent. I, let me put it that way, indifferent okay. until Monday morning. So All right. I think maybe you're just a half a day ahead. But uh, again, if I started seeing maybe some strength in, the, in gold by the end of the day or maybe some other stuff, maybe I could change my mind. But the... Uh, you know, you look at this and then you look at the, we just looked at the TLT. A lot of these things, I can see a lot of people probably just pulling their hairs out of their head going, none of these things line up. The correlations are all broke. And what does that mean to me? That means there's something going on that hasn't happened too many times before. And we're seeing some of the byproducts of the government's uh, meddling uh, in some of this stuff. Eventually that bay, uh, bill gets paid. I'm just not exactly sure what it is. Um, you know, see a close, you know, we get a real big sell-off into the close or something. I think that may be a big enough signal to pull the trigger. You know, we get down to 2420 or something by the end of the day. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I think, you know, if you start seeing weakness now, no one wanting to be long anything, I think that's another good sign that there's a general weakness in the market. And maybe it's some kind of byproduct that we haven't seen before. I think maybe that's why crude kind of fell apart back those two years ago. I mean, there's there's always a reaction to anything you do in finance. And that, you know, sometimes they're just weird and bizarre. Uh, and they don't make sense. But I get that kind of feeling right now. Okay, so it sounds like you're just pretty much stepping back from a I, lot of sectors. Yes, I think there's a handful of sectors. We saw the semis fail, and I think you may have another day of a bounce in them, or today may be it. But wow. what we're going to see now is the next move down is probably going to be things like the uh, standard S&P stocks, maybe the small caps, uh, and generally the small caps are the last to go. So let's take a look at them. Real quick and see. Okay. You look like at the IWM? Yeah. Okay. Down a second. It's, there it is. Okay. So you gap down. You had that. You got a no volume bounce out here today. Uh, I like filling about half the, uh, the uh, gap down from yesterday. Um, so I'd say 140.70 
I mean, we got kind of close to that already. So it's within the it's within the realm out there of pulling the trigger today or Monday. If you get up there and and you get the same thing, no volume, uh, and very light volume in the general markets too, I think it's a good sign. I think uh, you could start seeing this one roll over. Um, I'll look at three by three on this when we come back too. I think we're going to have something on that. Okay. Be back in a minute. Thanks, Dave. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge Heard Daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we are back. When we're looking at the IWM, you had the big move down. You broke the uptrend in the 3x3 three three displaced moving average. And you filled about half of that gap down today. Could you get up to 140, 70, or one, even 141? I, I think you could, but you've got a pretty good signal out here. As long as this thing continues to arc down over the next couple of days, it's kind of looks a lot like the semis did just before they fell out of bed. So I'm I'm not a big fan of. Uh, saying that the market's going higher. I'm not very bullish. I do say, though, it could flip either way. But right now, if you are bearish, I think you got a pretty good shot in here. If you could have caught this thing at the high of the day out here in the IWM, I may have pulled the trigger. Again, uh, 
you know, here, I think you kind of got a nice little shot, uh, maybe come Monday, but uh, eh, if you didn't catch the high of the day, that's kind of it. Uh, we're at 24.25 on the S&P cash. Volume continues to be very tepid. We're still under 2 billion shares by hair today, which means we're going to have a pretty light volume day. This may just be one single day and in, in, in a pop higher. But again, I continue to see a lot of these stocks that make me think uh, that uh, we could continue to see a low volume decline like we saw a couple of years ago into August. Um, you know, a lot of these things look fairly interesting. Uh, McEwen Mining wanted to see how some of these other gold stocks did. Maybe they hold up better than the metal itself. I just suspect that you could see these things gap down on Monday. Uh, June 5th. Two dollars seventy, or excuse me, two dollars forty-seven cents, uh, four point two million shares. You got into today with half of that, and if you hold above it, you actually got kind of a buy signal. But my guess is that a lot of these gold stocks have been hit kind of hard along with gold. I think you want kind of a move where some of these things start closing back above uh, even a traditional moving average like the nine-day. So I would probably be willing to give up a little bit of cash uh, to not anticipate, uh, but react to a move higher. So if you saw maybe some of these things move higher on Monday, get above their nine-day moving average, maybe you could see a little bit of a trend change. Um, you just, you're just barely closing back at that 247 level. Um, let's take a quick look at AES2. Um, anything else? Let's take a quick look at UNG. I haven't looked at that for a while. Uh, you're getting kind of close. You're, you know, we're halfway into August, or I mean, July, maybe about four weeks away from finding a low in the UNG. Uh, you had your high volume low of 12.7 million shares a couple of days ago. Uh, today you're back down with 9 million shares. So you're going to be too close again. Uh, again, these things like the bottom somewhere around the first two weeks of August. There's kind of a interesting reason why in natural gas, and that is that the long-term contracts for natural gas into the winter by electric companies uh, generally get filed about then, and that's when the price tends to firm up. So if you're looking at these uh, in natural gas and trying to anticipate when you want to look at these, I'm going to say first or second week of August. You still don't have much here to hang your hat on. Um, and again, heavy volume on Monday. You're kind of coming into that with similar volume today. You can continue to see natural gas a kind of weak or maybe even go sideways. But I'm thinking you're maybe four weeks early. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And I'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.